Nation. Welcome back to the Hockey Nation Live Show with Coach Frenchie Zurich Lee from the boot and Michael DeVellano Zurich Lee from West Coast in California. Michael, welcome in the show for another great one, the daily show every day, 11 a.m. Eastern time, of course. And today we have a two, not only small signature, but two great news in NHL, honestly. It's a weekend where usually it's quiet, but I think uh, we're going to talk about two one. One surprised me a little bit, and the one is a it's a good move, I think, for both for the players and also for the for the team. But uh, let's start with uh, the one where I'm like, uh, you need to give me a little bit more input about that because I'm a little bit surprised they're letting go. Uh, it's um, the new signature of Josh Levo with the Calgary Flame is a third player. Moving from Vancouver, they like now Vancouver become the the AHL team for the Calgary affiliation. Honestly, so weird. Uh, eight hundred seventy five thousand dollars one year. Uh, Twenty seven years old, uh, left wing. I think he's always been a player under the radar. Uh, you know, for a third four line, I think he he play his role very well. We hey, don't think worry, he came from Toronto. I think he have a good couple of good season over there. He did. Yeah. Every time he came up, he scored for Toronto, and I think they just didn't have room for him. And once again, we see Toronto shedding assets. It goes to Vancouver. Like, he had, like, 13 or 14 goals, and then last year he was on pace for that again. So to get him yeah. under a million is a great deal for Calgary. It's funny. He never had the, the time to – I think, you know, sometimes – the, the team or coaches don't believe on someone. I feel he never had that opportunity because you can think about this. He was start in 13, 14 in NHL with Toronto, where he's been with there for six years. And he played, think about this, seven game, nine game, 12 game, 13 game, 16 game. And then finally, 18, 19, he got 27 game with Toronto before he got trade to Vancouver. And he finished the season with 76 game last season and he you know he had like um he has like 24 point 14 goal in this last season with vancouver with 15 minutes i think he gave him a good role over there um he has seven goal in 36 so it's about like another season about 15 goal like he just yeah. got in to you so i, I don't know why the they I don't know he, he's not like you know he's big he's six two he's not um He's not like he doesn't look like a high skill player, but he's smart and he's he goes to scoring areas and he's consistent. And I, I I'm surprised they didn't keep him. I we, it's funny because we talked about this like the day before. Exactly. <laughs> I had no idea, I had no idea that he wasn't. I'm like, why is he not signing? And Vancouver is like really not had a good off season. Like they brought in Schmidt to replace Tanev, which is probably a, a bit of an upgrade. But I don't feel that. I mean, right now they're looking at Louis Erickson as a winger, and they, you know, they got Holtby, so it's not horrible. I mean, I think Holtby will be a good replacement. He's not as good as Markstrom. It definitely passes the torch to Demko. I mean, Vancouver's big pieces are in place, so I get that. But, you know, and this is, they're not going to be worse off because they don't have Josh Levo, so that's fine. But weird, weird offseason losing Markstrom and uh, Tanev. Now, Levo, remember, he got play only 36 games because he got injury with a kneecap yeah. injury. Yeah, kneecap. Um, and so he was out the season, did not play any game after, um, did not play any game. He was uh, scratched for all playoff game for Vancouver. Uh, did not return, honestly, with them. Um, so Good. that yeah. you know, uh, that's one something you have to figure out. Maybe that's the reason why. But honestly, uh, you know, he's a... Third round pick, 86 overall by Toronto. I just let the kid, he's, he's, you know what I mean, 6'2", uh, yeah. 190. Um, I don't know. I think it could be filled out. My, my question to you would be more about Calgary. We talk about um, Calgary, I don't know. I think they have like nine players for six spots for the third line, four line. Probably. Probably. But I think what everybody is anticipating that want to compete is the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games potentially. Now, if they end up with a shortened season, then that will be a different matter. But I think teams are preparing for the reality that, 
you know, they're going to have to have depth and they'll have a lot of, you know, your injuries will go jump up significantly with back-to-back games like people are projecting. And I, I think, I think, you know, Lucic on the third line, like always worries me. So if you have this guy on the third line with Dubé and Reinhardt, then that should be pretty useful. I don't know. Because, you know, you think about the, the last, last three label, Nordstrom, Dominic Sima, uh, Simon, like two days ago. Yeah. So we get a lot of players where they build and they're already there. I think Dubé is already there. I think you men- mentioned about Lucic. I think Derek Ryan is another one over there. Yeah. Um, so I think at that moment... Derek Ryan's a good player. He can play third line center. So I think they have like a lot of players to fill up over there. Uh, sure. with, without mention to you, Buddy Robinson and Zach Rinaldo, where usually they are almost regular players with, with NHL, right? So it's going to be very interesting about that. I think they're still missing a piece of this. Again, you really believe you and Mangiapeni, uh, where, okay, but I think... I'm not sure that's that's good, good. Good. Right, like he's he's a good player. I don't, I don't, I think that he's capable. But I mean, what if he falls off? You know, now they have a lot of options. Like Levo could flex up with Backlund and Kachuk, no problem. Like Dylan Dubé could flex up. Um, you know, Dominic Simon can flex up. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I agree with you. Right? I think they've done a good job. I mean, I, I'm pretty impressed with what they've done overall. Yeah. And then, of course, the the big news I just mentioned, like 30 minutes, I was live on the it's uh, Buffalo Sabers have an agreement with our RFA uh, Sam Reinhardt. Um, that's it's a big news because I think you know when you are Reinhardt right now, when you have an opportunity to play with Taylor All and also um, Jack Eichel on the first line, um, that's a great um, great for the players first of all to increase their his stats of course and he, you know okay. I mean, he's always been a great um players at 20 to 23 goals 25 goals uh, you know what i mean like he's only in the last five years he never missed any game he missed only eight game in the last five years with buffalo uh, at 5.2 i think it's great for yeah. buffalo on on agreement, but also for the salary cap. And also it's good for him because honestly, he will become a UFA next season um, after that. So That's risky, right? I mean, you're, that's a really good player. Like they have a lot of UFAs next year. So there's some, there's some riverboat gambling in that. Um, is he, is he, RF, is he UFA next year? I believe he is because that's the agreement. He signed up next um, for that one over there. Wow, what a that seems like a mistake. I mean, I can call you back again on that one or that. No, man, that would be a mistake. If the all right, you set up RFA next season. Yeah, that makes sense. I think he they would still have just he's twenty three, right? So he'll still have they'll still have rights, you know, to retain him. So then it works out all right. Um, overall, you got to give Kevin Adams a ton of credit. Like the guy's brought in big pieces. He's filled in some depth. You know, to turn Marcus Johansson into Eric Stahl, to get Sam Reinhart without any drama back on the roster, to steal Taylor Hall, and you know they they they've got Cody Egan. Cody Egan was a smart signing. You know, they've got Dylan Cousins coming up. The defense looks good. They're not even thinking about Casey Middlestad. So at the that, bottom, they got Reader, Dubias Ryder. Yeah, which he has a previous relationship, I think, with. Kruger yep. through the Swiss national team. Yep. I mean, I think I, the one I was surprised that they didn't keep Dominic Cahoon, but, and I'm surprised someone has not picked this guy up. Um, I do think the Tage Thompson, there's a little bit of risk, but not much. Like it's a low enough number that if he plays the way he's capable of and he's healthy, then they should be in good shape. So I won't play for He re signed Montour. At 1.4, I don't think so. It's a big number. They don't have right now. The only problem I see in the lineup right now is only Jeff Skinner at nine million dollars. But he'll but, have a bounce back year. But again, he have a bad year. But yeah. he probably can't either inconsistency on his stat. If you oh, it's like that. He's follow him. Is one good year, one bad year. Now, yep. Um, <laughs> I think you need to find him a spot where now I'm a little bit concerned about. Okay, 
who's going to play with all who's going to play with a call and that's make because the second line after that anybody uh, like it's obviously hall and reinhardt at this point olofsson and skinner with stall make a ton of sense you know like T skinner or they brought in stall in part to play with skinner there's a previous relationship there in carolina they had a lot of success so I think, you know, Kevin Adams came from that organization. Uh, Olofsson can, can play first power play, second power play. He's less of a five-on-five five threat, but on the power play, he's lethal. And then Hall is obviously going to play with Eichel. I mean, that's the whole draw. But it, I, I don't know. It's really an, it's an interesting lineup. Like, they're very deep. If, if the goaltending holds up, and I think the goaltending will be better with this lineup, but, you know, that's yeah. – the only thing they just probably need one. I would love to see them get. I would have liked them to see them move on from Carter Hutton because I just don't think that works. Well, but, they like, have one hour to be sure. You know, I mean, six million dollars for up for so for another yeah. three years. That's a problem there. Yeah, um, they, they'll buy him at a point. Winner is a very problem for me. A nine million dollars. Uh, that's the second it's problem there. Ridiculous. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah. And then you have to sign up Victor Olofsson, but he, they are still $9 million on. Yeah, on they'll that's sign him. He's a real problem. Uh, I think they mess up them. They're, they should get also a goalie at some moment. Yeah. We, we're not dead. Now, it's how happy it is. Uh, Restoring him. Uh, that will be something to pay attention because next year. <laughs> The season, the, the problem is this year, is, you know, I think we have a good year, but the following season, it's, we talk about 12 players right now with UFA. Uh, uh, that would be good. So I think they are also careful about the following year uh, because I think they will have to figure out what's going on with their, with that part over there. And then they have to finally say, I think they need to find a way with Casey Missile, the, um KC uh, middle staff have to step up and to en engage with the top nine players. Maybe, you know, maybe it does. I don't have a lot of faith in his. It's not his talent that's the issue, right? It's his grit and it's his maturity. And I don't think he's in amazing condition. So he's a weird player to me. I would have traded him. I, you know, honestly, what I was thinking in my head in the offseason, Pierre, was that they would take him along with a draft pick and try to get Matt Murray. I'm surprised that you wouldn't have used that as a chip because he still has value and he may not have value in a year. If he spends one more year in the AHL or he comes up the NHL and plays terrible, like he, he would be a Galchenyuk type guy. You know, he, he's, he's called a goal last two years ago at 19 years old. There, there's no issue with that kid's talent. There's a reason he's in the AHL. He's just soft and he doesn't, he's not, He's kind of like not a conditioned it athlete. What happen? You know, I mean, I, I think overall, I think it's a great trade for everybody. I think sure. it's a good agreement there. I think it would be interesting. Hopefully, middle step pans out. You know, it, it's another team. I'm very curious about where they're going to go around this the upcoming season. They're very interesting. They increase a lot, a little bit like Detroit did a little bit. What Ottawa did very, they, they increase more player. Every time that Montreal's another team, they, they, they change a little bit their philosophy. You know, so there will be very interesting about that one over there uh, to see what what's next for Buffalo. So um, yep. good stuff over there. I think it's great. Um, it'll be very, you know, see what happens. Now, around the league, they don't have a, a lot of stuff going on over there, like rumor and rumor and rumor, of course, like everything else. You know what I mean? Like, um, well, the GM meetings, it sounds a lot like people are pushing for a shorter season. And bubbles and like kind of hub cities. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you do the around again, just mention a little bit what's going on around the UFA. Uh, we still have a lot of players sign up, but still have Hoffman, Grenlin, Ar Amonik, Kovacak, Ola, Sodenberg, Zuclair, Vetenen, Astanesio, Kelchenak, Brassa, Perry, Shara, Wilson, Martin, Sherry, Cahun. Wow. Aisley, Aisley, <laughs> and then Carlson. I'm talking about the 20 player right there. That's I've been great. able to do the list I mentioned to you. They can, you whole other team. Them, they can play in NHL. Like you could literally have another team. 
<laughs> that's a good wouldn't be a great team, but you could definitely. I mean, you think about it. Imagine you have a team. You got like Granlin, Hoffman. You've got Vatnin. You know, you've got players there that can play. You got Kovalchuk. Like you could put together like a lower tier team. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, I agree. <laughs> As I mentioned, the goalies: Oward, Jimmy Oward, uh, Miller, Greg Anderson. You know what I mean? Like, I don't say they are the best of the best. It would but, be amazing if they did that. Just, like, take all those guys and slam them together in Team X. <laughs> and it's like, all right, boys, listen, you're your own owners. You get your own X franchise playing in all the bubble cities. You're in the schedule. You're going to do rev share with the NHL gets half your dough. And the players get the other half. Everybody yeah. gets their share. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I don't know why they didn't. I, I, did you hear about this? Maybe this is just a question. I guess it's nothing. Like I didn't hear this. Do you believe the roster should be increased for the upcoming season? It, I think it might have to be because the 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 junior uncertainty. There's going to be a big development issue. Like we're already you know hearing that WHL might play a 30 to 40 game season. Like and a lot of owners don't want to play. Because so what about money? Like if you play this year without, th you know, three, a lot of teams need 3,500 fans to break even. And if your average attendance is 3,500 and you're down to 1,700, you're cutting a check for $2 million. So what about the, the salary cap at that moment? At some point, <laughs> it's going to come into play because the TV contracts up. You're not getting the gate revenues. What they're saying is it's going to be, it might be prorated. So they might get 55% of their paycheck. So the cap number technically is the same, but reality is those contracts, they don't get the full value of them. Like if a player is getting 700 grand, they're really getting like 400 grand. Yeah. But again, it's just like, you know, if they increase the roster, they have to figure out for the salary cap, the 80, 81.5. So how they do that, I don't know. Yeah. Sure. The signings we've got. Most teams are well under the cap. Like there's a there's a lot of cap space right now for a reason, I think. And so they not could have like the 23 roster, main roster. Then after that, they can add players they sign up. They are maybe under contract like AHL or something like right. that. It's gonna affect their salary cap. I th I think that you would see that they would have a buffer. You know, they yeah, would say yeah, like, yeah. here's the buffer roster, and you can yeah. uh, put rules around it because I think then it's like you and you would have to swap in and out without going over the cap. He makes sense. Makes and sense. I think that's why you see Calgary doing what they're doing, for example. Yep. So uh, it would be very interesting about uh, front situation. We know like we uh, we do every day. We are on the on the race to bring you a preview for each team in NHL. We on the a marathon of 31 days right now, back to back to back to back, daily. Of course, Hockey Nation fans, we are here at 11 o'clock Eastern time. And uh, today we are with another, another team. And of course, is a, like, <laughs> like Michael said to me, a bizarro team where we have no clue what's going on. We need more. I don't know what's going on with Chicago Blackhawks. We heard a letter. He, Scotty, uh, not Scotty Bowman, but um, yeah. Bowman sent to the fans and maybe around the league and everybody about we are on the rebuilding. Uh, <laughs> we can call it whatever you want, call it uh, honestly. Uh, but again, really strange. It's like a little bit what the New York Rangers did a couple yeah. of years ago. But I think at that moment, New York Ranger was not the same position like Chicago with no veterans. Where to yeah. act. I mean, they had they signed Panarin, so they already have a Panarin. All right, so I, I think just the level set. If we go back to the playoffs, you know, the expanded playoff round, they got a win versus a very good Edmonton team. And I was even before that matchup, I was like, I think they might beat Edmonton because they just they have that veteran presence from Kane and Taves, and then they got a bunch of really up-and-coming young players. And Corey Crawford ended up being the star of that round because he stole games. Like, really, what it boiled down to was Chicago had better goaltending than Edmonton. And so then you go out, and they don't re-sign Crawford. It was, and they don't replace him. So it was really strange. If you think back to the beginning of the year, that roster had 
Robin Leonard, along with Crawford. They also had Gustafson, and they had one other player. They had Saad, obviously. And then they go and make another trade for, you know, Brandon Saad for a pretty inconsistent Nikita Zadorov. Colorado is, you know, jumping for joy that they got a player like Saad is a big piece for what they're trying to do. And then, you know, you, you see the, the the message from Taves that, hey, no one's told us we're rebuilding, but it seems pretty obvious, which is, you know, confirmed like a day later with the rebuild letter from Stan Bowman to fans and that they talked to the veteran players after that or, bef- you know, before the letter went out. Uh, and then yesterday we see this statement from Jeremy Calton and the young supposedly hot coach who I'm not sure if I'm on the same page that he's the great young coach, but I mean, he, I'm not, not to say he's bad, but you know, there's, there's some imperfection in what's going on on the bench management. So it is what it is. Um, you know, the coach makes a statement that the, Hey, the veteran players have got to get on board and help us with these young guys, but they were already doing that. You know, like if you look at what's on that roster, Taves, Kane and Keith are still big parts of it. Seabrook, I think, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how much he plays anymore. I think he's kind of done, wasn't he? Who? Brent Seabrook. He's on the long-term injury. Yeah. Uh, because the situation, the, cal- the salary cap and everything like that, because I think he's over $6 million. Yeah. Um, so I think they would prefer him to put, you know, on the long injury. And yeah. I, think, I don't see him to come back in the NHL, being honest with you. I- I didn't either. It's weird that they, but they did mention him when they talked about players they talked to about the change in direction. So it's really strange. They go, you know, we'll look at the lineup, but it, when you look at what is on the roster from a young point of view, Kubalik was an absolute steal from the Czech Republic. This guy's a 30 goal scorer. He was in contention for the Calder trophy in the playoffs. You could argue he was their best player. Most nights, like he's very dangerous when he's on the ice. So you got this guy that's kind of 25 years old. He can score 30 goals. He fits in on the top two lines, no problem. You got Kirby Dock, who at times you can see this guy's 18 years old, but he does not look 18. Like he's six foot four. He's got a high skill level. He's finding seams and he's attacking the net with moves. So he's a highly skilled player and he's intense. So you got to think like that's going to translate. And you've got a second line center. So all of a sudden, maybe a first line center like soon. And then DeBrincat, we know how he kind of fell off this year, but you know he's still very dangerous. Like you can see, he gets opportunities every game. He gets lots of shots. He's going to be a high goal scorer in his career. Strom, I feel like, is what he is. You know, Strom is was a high draft pick. He can score goals. He can get assists. He's not the best skater. He's kind of heavy footed, but he's a skilled player. So he can he can play second line minutes. He can play. Third line minutes if you need him. I don't think he's great as a third line center personally. And then you got Adam Bockfuss, which is kind of going under the radar. And this guy should be a top three defenseman. He's highly skilled, right shot defenseman, can really skate, good first pass. He controls a power play very well. I thought they did have a good signing with um, uh, Walmart, who previously played with, uh, was he in Florida and then Carolina as well? Yeah. 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 Is it Lucas? Yep. Yeah, he. so I think that's a good signing because I think he had 14 or 15 goals or 11 goals last year or something. He's under a million dollars. He's like 920. Uh, I thought they had a decent draft with Lucas Reichel. The year before, though, is the real win where they got Kirby Dock. So it's kind of surprising to me that then they, you know, what are they going after? Another high draft pick? Maybe, you know, maybe they feel that they need something. So if you can you see this screen pretty well? Yeah. Yep. So, you know, and they had previously made a trade of Yoki Haru back to uh, Buffalo and they picked up Alex Nylander. Uh, I think that worked out for them. Yoki Haru had some real uh, attitude issues, which was weird. And he's kind of lazy. So I think that was part of the thing. He did not fit in with the Chicago culture. Nylander, I think, has worked himself into a reasonable role, but he's very much like his brother, where defensively he's a major liability. But he's highly skilled. So they'll have to figure that out. Kubelik, as I mentioned, I think is an awesome pickup for nothing. Taves showed again he can still produce at a high level offensively, and he's always going to be good two ways. The Brincat, Doc, and Kane, like this land line is awesome to me. Like, oh, and then they signed Matthias Janmark. I forgot about that. So Janmark was a good pickup from uh, Dallas, who we saw play a lot of big minutes. He doesn't hurt you. He's not going to get you a lot of offense, but he's he's definitely 
can win faceoffs and he can skate like he's a good player. Um, Patrick Kane is still at the top of his game. I mean, the guy had 110 points like a year ago, and then this year he still had like what 79. So he's he's highly capable of producing top top offensive numbers. You know, I don't like the Zach Smith contract, but that is what it is. That'll go away pretty soon. So overall, they still have depth on the forwards. I think the real problem goes to the D is okay. Like Duncan Keith can't keep shouldering the load. Bockfist will help, but he's not a big guy. DeHaan is always injury prone, and your Connor Murphy is okay, and he's probably overpaid. Slater Cuckoo is decent. He's a good skater, but he's not going to get the offensive numbers people once thought. I don't know who Nick Sealer even is, <laughs> you know, and then you look at the goaltending. If you're going into the year with Malcolm Subban and Colin Delia, a year ago you had Leonard and you had Crawford. Like it makes no sense. Malcolm Subban has not shown himself to be even more than a below average to average backup. So I don't know where they think that he's going to suddenly have 936 or 915 save percentages and be able to shoulder a 50- or 60-game load. And Delia hasn't played in the NHL since 2019. So they got some problems as far as I'm – and yet they're still at the cap pretty close. Like, they don't have a lot of cap room. So it's it's an interesting ca- dilemma. Yeah, the cap is like uh, $5 million right now. Honestly. <laughs> and they have to sign up. They have to sign Dalen Strom. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, the only one is the RFA for them right now. Um, what did he get last year? Was he like two million or two point three? Yeah. So I mean, you know, you can see in a year the big contracts obviously take a big chunk out of ten five and ten five for Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves. Ever since those two guys signed those contracts, they've been really struggling to compete. 6.4 to Alex DeBrincat in today's world seems a little high, but he's definitely, you know, he's 22 and he's capable of getting 30, 40 goals. So you don't begrudge him that. And you could see even when he wasn't scoring, he was getting opportunities. He's he's a highly capable winger, but it feels a little expensive. Kubelik at 3.7, I think, is a real good deal. The Zach Smith contract will go away. Jan Mark's only one year. Carpenter is what he is. So, you know, Doc at 925 for the next two years might be, uh, you know, a huge opportunity there. Like, and Nylander, I don't know if I have a lot of faith that he'll be much more than what he is, which is highly skilled, skates real well, but terrible defensively. Um, I don't know. They're a weird, they're a weird situation. Well, I, I think they built, they, they, they completely, I think you have a couple of mistakes there. First of all, a couple of seniors, sure, I don't, I, I, I don't agree with that part of there. I think Zach Smith is, should not be there, honestly, yeah. at 3.5. And then you have the bottom six is really low players. Yeah. I don't see really strong player there. Uh, you know, Highmore, uh, Walmart, uh, Gap. You know, when you talk about the four line with Gaff, Carpenter, yeah, uh, you know what I mean. It, it's not strong enough on that one. There, they Different. brought up Peary. What, where's the Peary contract? That's weird. Peary, you know, he's like uh, Peary's coming, like he's on the roster. Yeah, obviously. but again, uh, Peary's another. You know what? He, he's another level. He's a what? Another like Josh level. I yeah, think maybe. Peary is a couple. Of, uh, it's a player like that where. He never had that confidence from any team because he's he scored before 22 goals with the yeah, Panthers in 14, 15. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Like he have it, he have that chance. And you remember that the 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 spams the of 31 goal with Vegas, uh, 31 game with Vegas. He scored like 12 goals and 18 yeah. points. And then, Lightroom, you know, like I I think he's always had this problem where he's horrible defensively. Like he's just like a problem away from the puck. And it's like, you don't, he, unless he has the puck on his stick, he's a, he's not a good player. So it's really weird. Like it's, but he's very capable offensively. Yeah. But you know, is that so, so my point to you is like their depth is very bad compared yeah. to other team. Um, you know what I mean? Like you, you're a little bit concerned now. More, more, and more, and more. You want you start to looking about, you know, what I mean, like we are we doing this for more two months now, right? And yeah. that realized me a couple of things. You know, when you are just like a 
observe the game and you don't go deeper with contracts and player prospect and the player, how they build the team and all that. I feel like every team has two contracts plus $10 million. It strug- they struggle after that. They, yeah. they have a difficult time to get that. Totally. And because, because you see Tampa, look their salary Tampa. Look Boston, look their salary. They are more like lower, but more like seven, eight players get the most five, six, seven million dollars. That's it, you know, like it's spread around a lot better. There's yeah, more. yeah, exactly. So, and again, I'm not said it's negative. I don't want to be negative there, but I, it looked Toronto. Look, look, look at look at Los Angeles. It's you know, like Montreal, ten million dollars carry price is always in there. And you want to go more? Look, Florida Panthers with the ten million dollars with Provoski. Okay, so let's look at. Um, here's another. That's a. It's a really good point because you can see that it's been a big mistake. So look, who else has that? So you've got Los Angeles with Kopitar and Dowdy, right? You've got um, San Jose. What's that? San Jose. San Jose. Right, you got the Carlson Burns, you got Kutcher at eight, you got Canyon at seven, but it's really the 11.5. You know, that there's something about that just takes such a huge chunk out of your lineup, and you got eight million. Look at Edmonton, even to an extent, like Edmonton is right up against the cap, which it's really you know, the Edmonton with like McDavid and Drysidle. Drysidle's a steal, by the way, obviously. And they don't, they just don't have a big defenseman, but you know, they've struggled and it's early. So I, it'll be interesting to see because yeah, it, it's been a challenge. It definitely creates a problem on your roster. It's very more difficult to build. A way more. You, more. And you, your point about Tampa is, you know, they, this is why teams spread it out. So they are willing to take a risk on the back end. So you look at Tampa's got Kucherov at 9.5, but he's signed past the 2026-27. Stamkos is 8.5. He signed that was signed a while ago, and it's till 23-24. And you look at Hedman, he signed till 24-25 at 7.8. So it, it gives you flexibility. Now they just signed Vasilevsky to 9.5. So that's gonna be interesting. You know what? When you think about this, it's like I'm 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 deeper now with salary cap. I know we a little bit slip out the Chicago, but do you know what what rank is Sidney Crosby in initial about salary? It's eight point seven, and then you've got you've got Mel at nine. He's a twenty eight right now in NHL with the highest yeah. salary twenty eight. Yeah. So, the, you know, it's hard because that was a contract that was signed quite a while ago and things were, you know, the cap was a lot lower. However, again, it's given them complete flexibility to put just enough pieces. Like if you can get an extra two million in there because your guy's at eight, seven. So I think that's why GMs are signing guys longer. And you go, God, why did he give that guy six, five? And then he, you see his peak. It's a bit of a risk. But it's a risk either way, right? If you wait, like Sam Reinhardt, Sam Reinhardt, if he has a 40 goal season, what do you do? You, he goes, listen, Jeff Skinner's getting nine. Why am I not getting nine? Well, I, I was just looking around. I just feel like, you know, it, it, it seems like an albatross. So I think, you know, GMs are playing a game, right? They're like, I'm going to take a risk that this guy's going to keep improving and I'll get him at a cheap number for long term. And that's what you kind of saw with Crosby. That's what you kind of see with like Stamkos where they they seem like they're a couple million lower, but they've got a lot of money up to this point. So it works out, right? But then you get Kopitar at 10 million, you get Dowdy at 10 million and LA can't even make the playoffs. Now they got old and slow real fast and they're going to be very good. They have a ton of prospects, but same situation with, with Chicago, right? And maybe, you know, Chicago might be right. Like Chicago might look at their lineup and say, Duncan Keith is 37. Who's going to replace Duncan Keith? It's not going to be Nikita Zadorov. It's Bakvist is going to be very good, but he's not going to be Duncan Keith, I don't think. So then, you know, we need more assets. And all of our assets have already graduated. The Brinkat's on the ro- roster. Doc's on the roster. We got lucky with Kubalik. 
you know, where do we find three defensemen that are this caliber? And they're not, they're not out there that easy. So they probably got to draft them. And if you look at the draft next year, there's some very good defensemen. So maybe that's what they're looking ahead to. They're like, we're just going to eat it. We'll keep all these pieces in place. We'll sabotage it in a shortened year with crappy goaltending and live with the bad D. And then we'll draft a bunch of high guys. But, you know, those guys take time too. Yeah. Talking about, you know, Chicago finales with this, you know, the draft 2020, you know, uh, unfortunately, because they make the playoff, they're going to win the second first round. So they have to move to all the way to the, at the end of the, now they pick number 17. That's the other thing, because they got a good player. They could, didn't get a good, a great player. And that's, you, you hit a good, that's a good point, Pierre. They're probably kicking themselves, right? Definitely. Definitely, 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 because now you have to recruit Luca Richel. Recall, he's good, but he he's went good. Right. But when you have him, and maybe to be the top eight, when we talk about Raymond or Rusey or Dristel, you know what I mean? Like it, it, so it's those guys could have jumped in the lineup, right? Yeah, exactly. That's my point. That's the point here, and I think that's hurt them um, so on that one over there. So, you know, maybe what they're saying is correct. So take a look at this. This is the projected draft for next year. Brant Clark from the Barry Colts is very, very good defenseman. Okay, right shot defenseman, high offensive output. Barry's going to be a real good young team for the next couple of years. Owen Power from Michigan is a six foot five skating left shot defenseman that can really play. <laughs> okay, so he's a monster, right? You've got Lambos out of Winnipeg, who looks like he's going to be a real good NHL defenseman. You have the other Hughes, which is Luke Hughes, who's jumping up in the discussion. He's bigger than his brothers, and I think he's as good. Like, he looks like he's got a lot of offensive talent. So there's a big right shot defenseman. And then you also have – there's one guy I missed. Um, oh, no, he's not listed as high anymore. The Swedish kid's good. He's another big – left shot skating defenseman. So you look and if you're just thinking about defensemen and the big holes in Chicago, it's pretty interesting. Um, oh, that's crazy. Kent Johnson is now ranked fourth. We drafted Kent Johnson. <laughs> that's annoying. He went to Michigan. Um, it's crazy. We got some good talent. Um, Gunter's good. There's another player that I was thinking of. Oh, Chaz Lucius. I mean, this kid... Have you, have you seen him play? No, I did not. So his his uh, brother is Cruz, Cruz and Chaz. They're now part of the U.S. development program. Uh, but they were at Gentry Academy and destroyed everybody. Like this, Gentry has got um, Sean Skinner as the skills guy, and he created the skills program. And they've created they've got elite players pumping out. It's crazy. So, the, I mean, next year's draft should be very, very good. So I think they're probably looking at it like, can we acquire some more assets in this draft? Do we get a top five pick? Now, um, when, you, um, you see, cool. when you see a team and, you you know, you go follow the people and more and more, you pass like a couple hours per day, you say, my God, this is amazing. But I'm always looking at okay, what they have in the uh, – and their bank, like their draft pick, and who play AHL and who play OHL, WHL, everything like that. And then when the player ranking on their best player coming with their prospect, everything like that, and they are already in NHL, Michael. That's that, what I was saying. Like they've already yeah. graduated, right? So exactly. exactly. So you have, you know, Chicago we have Kirby that that they have different uh, different cut, and then you have. The, the defenseman, I, I really like him. I really interested to know him a little bit more. It's Adam um, Ockfist. Yes, I like him. I just want to see what he's going to get there. And then after that, you have Alexander Nalander over there, and then it's that's it. So they have the top four. That's, the problem. that's probably what they're looking at, right? They're they're looking at it, going, all right. Debrin Cat's young, but he's already in the NHL. Doc is the future, and he's are in the NHL. Nylander, we swapped for Yoki Haru with Buffalo, and he's are in the NHL. Like, what do we got left? And there's not much. Now, after that, you have to go with Mitchell in Denver. Then you have Regula, Regula with long term, long term. I don't know. That Penn State. Um, then you have Kalinuk, Wisconsin. And then you have Tipley, 
Um, maybe you know him, a left winger, Winnipeg for the ice, Winnipeg, a WHL. Then, you know, I mean, that's the after that, it's all NHL potential where they are not there yet. You talk no, about they're not, they're not gonna have an impact, so that, and I, I think that you hit it, it goes back to those two ten million dollar salaries because it's not like they can run out and bring in big time help. Now, they could have brought in a Hoffman, is that going to put them over the edge? But they're or you know, they really need a D. So if they were aggressive, they could have kept Crawford at three eight, but then you got no money. But they still have five point eight, right? That's what I'm saying, though. Imagine you got to sign Strom, and if you kept Crawford, you got no money. But again, it, it, it's back again. I check their check their 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 salary problem again, right? To yeah. to where at ten, 10 million dollars, and then they have the uh, the break yeah. cap got six point six point four, uh, but now. They could also let go Zach Smith on 3.5. I think that hurt over there. That hurts, yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, that hurt over there. And then you have, I think it was a bad senior show with Calvin DeHaan at 4.5. And that's another one hurt over there. Um, you know, I, I think 3.8, I don't know. I never, I, and again, maybe I'm wrong. Murphy to me does not feel like a $3.8 million defenseman. Murphy at 3.8 is another tough one over there to to get that. I, I don't know. And then they have no goalies. That's under the no goalies, like literally no goalies. Like no, you know, unless Malcolm Subban suddenly becomes a different. Yeah, he third. never goes to Nana. Well, no. forget that one over there. He's never going to be that one over there. Now you have two big injury on their list for ten over ten million dollars. They have. Brent Seabrook and also Andrew Shaw. We don't need. We never talk about him. And then in salary on Saad. And then they have two million dollars, yeah. almost two million dollars on salary for Saad and also Maeta. Maeta. Um, again, why the trade Saad for Zadarov? It, it doesn't make sense. They basically kept a million. They picked up three point two, and then they gave up six. So you saved a million eight, and you loot you. You get a big defenseman who I like sometimes and sometimes I hate. Like he's very inconsistent. You can't trust Zadorov. So now you've got like a guy that never plays in Dahan because he's always hurt. <clears throat> you got Murphy who's way overpaid and really should be five six, not a, a three four. And then Zadorov, frankly, you're better off as a, if it's a five six. So <laughs> they got problems. Yeah. That was at six million dollars. So that really the trade they get there, it was more about um open up their salary cap over there. Maybe a million eight. It's crazy. It's but not now I always said to you, is it better than Denmark? Why sign Walmart? But again, I would say to you, why to you know six million dollars, right? They have on, on that one over there, minus three point two. Now without Zad they still have Zad, and I think they can add Again, it's not just 3.2 because they retained a million. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But if you delete that, part, they, they could have a, another $2 million to yeah, sign. Easy. Then, uh, harmonic, I agree. A, a defenseman, more quad caliber, and then they yeah. keep have a good top six player over there. They could have done it. Their, their management of the money, and I bet you Corey Crawford would have stayed for two, three million. I believe crap. He signed for three point nine, right? Yeah, three eight times two or something. So it's like oh. I don't think he would have. I think he would have taken less to stay in Chicago. I think he would get four million dollars there. You have a shaker, a great goalie there at four million dollars, and honestly, minus one million dollars of the no goalie. Now he become at three million dollars. Yeah, he's. I'm there right now. Bowman. It's poorly. It's poor management. It's poor true. management there. That, that, that's our last statement about Chicago. Poor management. <laughs> it's it's un, it's true. I got. I don't know how else you put it, but yeah. So you know, it's another thing we're going to see. Uh, it, I've been honest with you, Michael. I think it's the first time we do this together, and you know, we grow. We try to get better, and it is fun to do that. But that's a good exercise. I love what we're doing yeah. right now, day after day. Uh, it's Keep us another perspective of each team more deeper, more. Oh wow! Look the manager. Oh, look what he did. Why did he do? What he should do? And then that gave us another chance to see, not only deeper, but give us a chance to see the the prospect, the draft, everything. So for sure, uh, 
you know, if you're a hockey fan, it's something you should join or you should go deeper and not only watch the game because I think at the end of the day, it's an amazing um, exercise, I'll be honest with you. Me, I mean, I love it. I, I, I really love it. And every time I'm excited to know what's the next team, what's the next team. I let you running this, but I, I, mean, I love to get that part over there. So um, i talk about the next team. I think tomorrow we're going to go another. Columbus? Columbus, another C, right? I think they have three Cs. <laughs> <and> <laughs> <other seas. laughs> right? Three Cs in NHL, I believe. I don't think so. After Columbus, you have another, <laughs> another one. After that, we have to move on with Dallas, if I remember, right? Yeah. Right? Yep. No, you know what? We missed one, Colorado. Oh, my God. Yeah, how could we miss Colorado? I know. So, Columbus, Colorado, Columbus. Yes, the Columbus, because the M versus the R, the four letters. Um, no, it's Colorado. Next, so, right? Or is it Columbus? Colorado, because C O L O versus C O L U. I'm, I'm excited to see, look at Colorado. Colorado is. Very interested to see that because I think one of the top best five management and manager in NHL, Joe Sakic, did a tremendous job. Sent his uh, this and and uh, uh, he does a very good job with that. So and it's a team where you have Nate McKinnon at six point five million dollars for maybe two more years, one more year. I think it's amazing to see that. So again, it's all about time management. It's all about the management and how you re you. Think about money, you know that. So uh, great exercise again. We know it's Sunday. We don't try to be here, but we still here 45 minutes, 45, seven minutes today. So uh, again, Hockey Nation fan, please subscribe to her YouTube channel. Go to her Facebook page. We are daily live. And also we add a couple of video left and right. We have uh, something going on, is going on around the league. So um, Let's move on to the next thing tomorrow, Monday at 11 Eastern time. My call again with yeah. Have a great, amazing Sunday, everybody. See you tomorrow at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Have a good one. <laughs>